This is Brian Wormers recording a lecture for medical surgical nursing, part of the hematology disorders section, and we're going to be talking about tr transfusion therapy now. So before you give a blood transfusion, um, a transfusion of any type of blood, really follow that, that policies and procedures that you have for your own institution. But some of the main things that should be included in that would be obtain a physician order, of course, for the product. Uh, obtain consent from the patient, saying that they are aware of consequences, and then collect blood for type and screen or type and cross. Gather supplies that you need, correctly identify that patient and the, the product that you're going to be giving. Examine that product and make sure that it's not cloudy or that there's gas bubbles or anything that, that looks suspicious in there. Then while you're transfusing, you want to explain that procedure well to your patient so that they understand what's going on. It's also vital that you tell them what to watch for, for any signs of back pain, any rashes, any fevers, any feeling that they have that they just don't feel right. They should report that to you. Always obtain vital signs before the infusion so you get a good baseline. And then you can slowly start infusing that, that product. Um, and then, of course, examine that patient closely. You'll be doing every every 15 minute vitals for the first hour then every 30 minutes for the next hour and then hourly so as your blood keeps going you can infuse it faster uh, we just try and slow it down in case there is a reaction and then throughout this whole process of course watch for those adverse reactions that they might have to it we can do lots of different types of transfusions we can do packed rbcs so this is um, red blood cells and we pack them um, to make it more efficient for when we give this back um, and it also takes up less space and it also has less side effects when we actually group all the RBCs together and take out some of the other products. So we must also match the ABO and the RH types when we're given RBCs. For platelets it's given for low platelets, active bleeding, or a scheduled procedure that we want them to be a little bit higher for. This is a pooled thing from several donors. Usually the PRBCs are a single donor. Next thing is FFP. So this is replacing some of the blood volume and clotting factors. We're matching ABO type with this one as well. And this is used for uh, patients that have got abnormal clotting, of course. Can you give granulocytes, WBCs, but uh, I think it's fairly rarely given. They do dilute it in plasma and they give it over a, a period of time. A subsection here, um, more commonly linked with RBCs, is autologous blood. So they've given before, and so they went to the blood bank. It's their blood. Um, so theoretically, it shouldn't have any diseases in it that they don't have, and uh, they should have a much smaller risk of having a reaction to that blood. So reactions, we talked about this before, but you know if they show any signs of being febrile, having any hemolytic type of stuff. So that's the back pain that goes along with it and the cells are lysing. They can have an allergy to it. Um, so oftentimes with an allergic one, they were given some, some Benadryl and Tylenol. They can have bacterial. So there's bacteria growing in the blood and then we get them sick and they get septic. Um, other signs and symptoms would include circulatory overload. So we gave too much volume too fast and they can't handle it. And the last one is graft versus host disease, where you start a war, and that's not good. Uh, where the cells in your body start fighting off the cells that you were giving, and that uh, can be fatal. Prevention of this, some things that we sometimes will do is to use uh, leukocyte reduce RBCs as well as to irradiate the blood products. Um, so think of you know leukocyte reduce. That means we're pulling those out, and so we're not going to have as much of a chance of reaction irradiated um, in a very simplistic way think about like microwaving your food you're warming it up but you're also killing any bacteria that's in it and so that's what we're trying to do is try and kill any bacteria that's in that uh, treatment for a reaction if it occurs is number one stop whatever product you're giving you know if something's causing something bad then stop doing that so stop that disconnect it at the closest site to the patient String up some normal saline, have that opened up so you can support blood pressure. Keep that blood at the side. You'll want to send it down to the lab when you get a second. 
call the provider, let them be, let them be aware of it. Um, they might have you be given Tylenol and Benadryl. And then, of course, that's managing the signs and symptoms that the patient has at that point in time. But the biggest thing is if you suspect a reaction, then stop with it, doing whatever you're doing. So. All right, this ends this slideshow. If you have any questions, please talk to your professor.